Arch Manning commits to the University of Texas today. We've got a bunch of different ways we can go with this. The first question on everyone's mind, I did a bunch of radio today, I did a bunch of TV hits today. The first question is, how big a deal is it and is the hype justified? So I want you, whether you're a Texas fan or whether you're just a college football fan, because everyone's got an opinion on this, I want you to sit back for a second. Let's talk this through together. And if you're not a Texas fan, and especially if you're anti-Texas, it's okay because it's just us. You can let your guard down a little bit. Let's just be honest with ourselves. And then once the show's over, you can put the shield back up and, and you don't have to acknowledge that anything major happened today. But what happened clearly is the biggest recruitment probably in the history of this industry ended up with Arch Manning verbally committing to Texas. I know some of you have just gotten off work not too long ago and you didn't get to follow this story throughout the day. And even the casuals amongst us know who Arch Manning is, so I'm not going to waste time on his bio or anything like that. This is the biggest recruitment in the history of our industry. This is Tim Tebow, but next level. You didn't know the name Tebow until Tim Tebow at Nice High School came on the scene. You've known the name Manning since the moon landing. Archie was playing for Ole Miss when we landed on the moon. He was there like 68 to 70. So that name has been for generations royalty in our sport. And there you go. Arch Manning now, the latest in that Manning family, commits to Texas. So that's what happened. How significant is this? I think it's really significant. And I, I think that there are ways to responsibly talk about this without having to heap unwarranted amounts of praise on the shoulders of a kid who has done nothing at the college level. I would say the same thing about Quinn Ewers. I'm going to say it about Arch Manning here. But to downplay the significance of this is to downplay reality in college football. This is a major recruitment. It's the top overall quarterback in the country committing to a program that desperately needed him. And the biggest pushback I got today was, well, we always say Texas is back. Well, no, we all don't always say Texas is back. You never heard me say it. I guarantee you go back in the annals, and I, you know how rarely I use that word for obvious reasons. Go back in the annals of this show. You find how many times we did a segment, whether in print or in just real moving mouth speaking terms, where we suggested Texas is back. We don't, we don't really do that that much here. We don't do the U is back every time Miami wins a game against an unranked opponent. We don't do Texas is back every time they win a bowl game. We don't traffic in that. And I'm saying all that to kind of tee it up and put it in the proper context when I tell you today meant volumes for the University of Texas. You may say, oh, people always say Texas is back. I've never said it. I said it since Sark's been there. I never said it when Tom Herman was there. I didn't say it because it wasn't true. It was always a stupid statement because there was never really any tangible evidence to suggest that Texas was back. But one of these days, when they say Texas is back, Texas really will be back. But it won't happen by accident. It'll happen due in large part to days like today because it takes a foundation. It's a process. You don't just all of a sudden stumble into being back. You build it. And you know what you do? You stack the number one offensive line class, and then you go out and get elite quarterback play. And then not only do you have guys like Xavier Worthy at wide receiver, you go get Isaiah Nayer, guys like him out of the transfer portal. It's a process. And if it's got to be uncomfortable along the way, i.e. Bo Davis on a dark bus driving home from yet another of a string of losses last year, chewing guys up one side and down the other, then maybe that's the way it's got to happen. But one day when they say Texas is back, they really will be back, believe it or not. And when it happens, it will be due in large part to days like today. I look at this recruitment, and I always thought the biggest weapon anyone had was the Mac Jones 2020 season at Alabama. The big trick for Steve Sarkeesian at Texas was to convince Arch Manning that was his doing and not Alabama's doing. And obviously it worked well enough, but when you go back and watch Mac Jones, I've got to imagine if I'm an elite quarterback, if I'm, well, let me rephrase. If I'm an elite and highly rated quarterback coming out of high school, because Mac Jones ended up being elite and being a first-round draft pick, but if I'm Arch Manning, if I view myself as generational, if the industry agrees with me, I look in the mirror and think I've got more raw talent than anyone, and that includes Mac Jones. And so if this man can sell me that Mac Jones version 2020 was due in large part to his play calling, and his development of the quarterback position, more so than the program, i.e. Alabama, that he was at at the time, I'm going to play for him. Because if Mac Jones did that under his tutelage, I can only imagine what I'm going to do. I think this is why programs like LSU were always out of it, or one of the reasons why uh, programs like LSU were always out of it. It wasn't any knock on LSU. I just don't think there was a proven enough track record there. Maybe it's different 
if Arch Manning comes along in 2028 and Brian Kelly's, you know, stringing together winning seasons. But it came down to the places with proven production at his position. And I always thought the deeper we got into this thing, boy, if he's buying into Steve Sarkeesian, then that clearly means he's going to buy into the fact that Steve Sarkeesian was the driver behind that offensive machine that was Alabama 2020 and Mac Jones 2020. But there, there was a, an immediate follow-up I got today, and I know a lot of you probably thought the same thing. Maybe you're even saying the same thing to yourself right now. Well, what about Quinn Ewers? I think it's kind of an Xbox mentality, and I, I always shy away from a particular phrase on this program, and it is quarterback controversy. I don't think outside of joking, I've ever really said it. I don't think I've seriously used the, the term or phrase quarterback controversy on this show. The way to win, the way Texas will be back, is for him to keep stacking talent on top of talent on top of talent. And that includes the quarterback position. Some people are going to talk about a quarterback controversy here. There is no controversy. There's no quarterback controversy even or any more than there's a linebacker controversy or a safety controversy. You get as many elite players at every position group as you possibly can, and you put them in a room the same way they did at the University Sark was at before he became the Texas head football coach, and then you let the chips fall where they may. And if one guy can't cut it and he transfers, so be it. That means someone better beat him out. And Arch Manning's not coming on campus this year anyway, but anyone who looks at this and calls it a, a brewing quarterback controversy, I don't think has an ounce of a competitive bone in their body. This is what you do. This is what the best do. Do you think Ryan Day and his staff sit around their war room and say, we'd love to offer this kid, but boy, it may, it may upset C.J. Stroud. Do you think Nick Saban cares about upsetting Bryce Young or Eli Holstein? Do you think they would have hesitated to take either one of them if the other in this cycle was going to get upset about it? Of course they wouldn't. Now, I know this may be unfamiliar territory. If you're 20 years old, for example, and you're following Texas football, you have not experienced Texas football being elite. But I can promise you, if it's ever going to be elite again, it's not because they got one guy like this. It's because they kept getting more and more and more guys like this. And inevitably, some of them will fall by the wayside. That's not a bad thing. Look at the programs out there where elite, good to very good, elite players usually don't transfer, but the good to very good players, where are they transferring? You know, um, Drew Sanders just transferred from Alabama goes to Arkansas. He's going to be a standout player for them this year. Why did he leave? He left because Bama's loaded. Does Alabama look any worse for the wear because Drew Sanders left? No, he left because of how good they are. Players, if you keep recruiting like this, will eventually leave Texas because of how good they are. To quote Diamond Dallas Page in his early WWE run, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And so now we get to look forward a little ways and, uh, yeah, you can have fun with talking about what's going to happen when Arch Manning gets on campus. I look at Texas as a program moving forward because there's plenty of time to talk about Arch Manning, and everyone knows what they think about Arch Manning. I think he's obviously a very good quarterback. <laughs> you know, I know that's breaking news tonight and a shocking revelation to everyone. He's a very good quarterback. They already do a lot down at Newman where he plays his high school ball that Sark in Texas do. Uh, his high school coach has been on record. In fact, Mike Roach and the guys over at Horns 24-7 today – I, they may have done a hundred different pieces of content and articles on this. And among those that I went over there and read today was Arch Manning's high school coach talking about how, yeah, we already kind of do a lot of what Texas does here. So now that he's going to Texas, that's a natural transition. But I think about the perception twofold. Number one, Texas needed this thing, man. Everyone else wanted him. Georgia wanted Arch Manning. Bama wanted Arch Manning. Texas needed Arch Manning. And they needed him because of what a lot of folks think about this program. See, a lot of folks look at Bama, proven commodity. Georgia, proven commodity. I'm mentioning those programs because uh, at least allegedly that's who they were up against, Texas being up against for Arch Manning. And Arch Manning chose an unproven commodity. You know how big that is? When you've got options now, do you know how big it is to look over in Tuscaloosa, Alabama at the greatest dynasty led by the greatest coach in the history of this sport, and then look further east to Athens, Georgia, a guy cut from that same cloth who just beat that coach in Tuscaloosa. They both want him, and he chose Austin, Texas instead. And he chose to be the guy that makes you what they are instead of going and continuing what those programs already are. It's huge, and to be blunt, a lot of folks didn't think Steve Sarkeesian could get that done. 
They'll never admit that now because it makes them look foolish. But a lot of folks didn't think Steve Sarkeesian could get that done. Now, you follow that up and you can ask yourself, okay, isn't this hype getting a little out of control? There's the secret. See, here's the trick. We're going to talk about this later in the show. What hype? What, have, you, have you heard me make a prediction yet? Have you heard me call for Texas to win the Big 12 in fill-in-the-blank year? Have you heard me talk about the national championship odds? I haven't. You know, because that kind of gets in the irresponsible lane, or, or in the lane at least that I don't think there's a lot of skill in. The hype is warranted if you're talking about how good the player is, because he is good. The hype is warranted if you're talking about how monumental a day it is for Texas football, because it is. I, again, go back to how impactful it was when Tim Tebow chose Florida. Do you think at the time anyone said, boy, we're making too big a deal of this Tebow cat, could you find those folks two or three years later when they had a couple of national championships and they had rewritten the record books and redefined offensive football in the SEC in the process? And Tim Tebow, I think, participated in the building of his own statues. He was barely off campus before they were erecting statues of him. You couldn't find anyone in 2009 to criticize the hype around Tebow three or four years earlier. My suspicion is that you won't be able to find many people down the road criticizing the immense hype around Arch Manning because he's going to deliver on it. I don't really have much doubt about that. I don't think there's a whole lot of bust potential with him. You can't forecast injury. You can't do that. But the things that are within his control, why have, why have any of us been given any indications that he won't fulfill on that? If you don't think he's quite as good as people say, that's fine. This is a very, very good player, though. And he's going into a tailor-made system for him. He's going to be surrounded by elite players. And the second part of that perception is what it signals to the rest of college football. It signals something about Steve Sarkeesian and his staff that they were able to get this done. But it also sends just this huge bullhorn of a message to the rest of college football that you don't have to wait to see the results before you can view this place as a destination. And it also should be noted, this didn't start the Texas recruiting ball rolling downhill. Cooper Patagna, a big friend of the program. I saw him talking earlier today about how this didn't start today. You know, they finished top five in recruiting this past cycle. They had the number one overall offensive line class. You think that didn't appeal to Arch Manning? You think he didn't do his due diligence? A recruitment as meticulous and thoroughly vetted as this, you think it didn't matter to them who he's playing behind? You think supporting cast didn't matter to him? You think Steve Sarkeesian hiring the right quarterbacks coach didn't matter to him? They were meticulous on Arch Manning's side of things, but Steve Sarkeesian and his staff were equally as meticulous. They put themselves in prime position to land this signature, which I ultimately think they will. I know it's a rule in college football. Anytime a major commitment happens, it's just, I don't know where it's written, but it's a rule that 80% of the responses have to include, well, he'll probably just decommit. No, he won't. Arch Manning won't decommit from Texas. Anyone who wants to bet me money on it, I'll bet you money on it. And strangely, everyone will go silent. The only people that want to wager on that end up being crickets. No one actually wants to bet their money on it. Um, he's going to end up enrolling at Texas. So the only question to me is, how good will he be? Uh, how transcendent will he be? I don't really have a whole lot of question also about how many dominoes will fall as a result of this. Texas, I'm not going to tell you they're back. I'm not going to guarantee any record because of this. I'm just telling you the hype around the impact of this cannot be overstated. It's monumental. It is like a, it's, it's, it's a potentially program-altering day, and we're in the middle of June. I don't know how often you say that. Uh, normally, it's like a coach retiring uh, when we use that kind of language, but this was the day Arch Manning chose. And so now, man, it's going to be a really interesting it's going to be a really interesting arrival for him because I was trying to think about this earlier today. You guys can help me out. I don't think even people who have followed this recruitment, I don't think people fully realize what's in store for him when he gets to the college level. Now, strangely, his last name has uniquely equipped him to handle this, but it's going to be a tsunami of hype and coverage and spotlight like I don't think we've ever seen a college football player warrant. And I'm talking about Tebow, and I'm talking about Johnny Manziel. Uh, Tua was a phenomenon when he broke out at Alabama. None of them had the last name Manning. None of them had a recruitment that was followed like this. And that even includes Tim Tebow. You've never seen anything like this because there's never been anything like this. And then he commits to one of the biggest brands in American sport, college or pro. That Longhorn logo is a big deal. It resonates. And here's the thing about the folks in Austin. 
It's not Alabama. It's not Ohio State. There has not been an assembly line of elite talent after elite talent rolling through there. He's the guy. Maybe it's Quinn Ewers that does it. And then he continues on that. But all these folks, all these kids playing for Texas right now, every one of them has the chance to be part of the cornerstone that turned everything around. Eventually, Texas will be back. And the players that are a part of the resurgence at the very beginning, they will be legends forever. You could be the third string fullback for all I care. You will never pay for a meal or a drink in the 100 mile radius of Austin, Texas. Again, if you're part of the team and the group that eventually turns it around. Huge day for Texas. Hats off to Sark and his staff uh, because this one, this one was one they had to be relentless on. They were and it paid off.